I mean that. How about you? I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. That was indictment God had for that Laodicea in church. They had need enough. They were miserable, wretched, blind. But the bad part is they didn't know it. Oh, God, I want you to know I need you. Why don't you look up to heaven and say, I need you, Jesus. I need you right now, Lord. I need you. I need you, Jesus. Oh, I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. yet pray for uh, Sister Jones. God give her a miracle. It's not too late. God's able to give her a miracle. I believe in God for a miracle. I believe in the Lord for a miracle. Somebody was saying something to me before service wanting a prayer cloth. Who was that? Who's wanting a prayer cloth? Somebody wanting a somebody wanting a prayer cloth? Oh, just a chair. Come right on. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. He's a miracle worker. worker somebody said what if he don't what if he does hallelujah what if he does
need, won't you reach out and touch the Lord while he's passing by? Oh, here I am, Lord, here I am. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. Sick and dying, bound in sin and shame. Somebody called upon the Lord, and soon sweet redemption came. Somebody held me up to God when I was feeling down. Somebody prayed just once more, so I can sing it now. Somebody got another prayer through. Fail to 
the house. Say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you.
Let's lift our hands up and love him. I love you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Well, he's a good God. Oh, I want to praise you, Lord. I want to thank you, Father. God, you're a good God. I exalt you, Lord. I magnify you, Father. No God like our God. I appreciate you, Lord. Glory, 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 glory. Amen. Amen. I praise your wonderful name. Well, you may return to your place of worship. We'll take another hitch at this. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe Sister Charlotte can leave with the Holy Ghost. For this night is over tonight. Amen. I believe it. I believe she wants it. And I believe she can get it. For the night's over. Amen. I believe she's hungry for it. Charlotte, we're going to believe God. Listen, you go fill in the Lord while this service is going on. Just throw your hands in there and say, Here I am, Lord. You don't have to be in no special spot. Same way with these that don't have it. Sister Emily over there. Amen. Old buddy over here. Praise God. Just throw your hands in there. Hey, Lord, here I am. Praise God. Praise God. Well, oh, he's a Holy Ghost baptizer. We can't baptize nobody with the Holy Ghost. Hey, but John said, one's coming after me who's mightier than I, whose shoe latches I'm not worthy to stoop down and unloose. And he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. Oh, he's the Holy Ghost baptizer. Glad to have our company with us tonight. Glad to have this young lady back there with Sister Cotton. Appreciate it. Good to see her. Good to see Sister Wheeler. Glad to have her tonight. Glad to have Sister Missy with us tonight. Glad to have Ethan and Olivia back in servers with us. Look at here. Oh, Adrian showed up tonight. Man, it's so good to see you, buddy. Has he grown up or what? I mean, he shot up, I'm telling you, he turned out to be a fine-looking fella. Have you got married yet? Well, if you marry anybody here, you got to stay here. Praise the Lord. We don't, we don't, we don't do that deporting. Amen. <laughs> but we love Adrian. Love his family. Amen. Appreciate them so very much. I'm so glad he's in church with us. Are you preaching yet? Okay, well, I'm like, well, I can. Amen. I can give you a shot. Hallelujah. Amen. Love Adrian. Amen. Well, God's good. Anybody in here believe God's good? Tonight would be a good night to get your miracle. Good night to get your healing. Yeah. Bible said, is any sick among you? Call for the elders of the church, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. We've done that. And it said, the prayer of faith. Surely amongst all this crowd, somebody bound to pray the prayer of faith. And the Lord shall raise them up. And if they've committed sin, it shall be forgiven then. Praise God. What a package. Amen. I said, what a package. One-stop shop. Praise the Lord. Get everything you need. Amen. One dose. Amen. One fellow said you need one dose of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Well, God is good. Amen. going to receive our evening offering and the choir is going to sing. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Old Bishop Martin said, don't get too spiritual. Take up the offering. I started living when I started giving to God. I started living when I started giving to God.
way maker. He'll make a way for you. He'll make a way when there is no way. But if you can, try to make it back to your place of worship. Praise God. Oh, bless you. Oh, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Hey. <laughs> Woo. Well, get all you need. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Woo! Yes, yes. Wow! Oh, hallelujah. I'm so happy I could shout, praise the Lord. Woo! Well, glory to God. Well, that's what happens in an apostolic church. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. God's good all the time. Amen. I said something to Brother Ethan today. He's a young preacher. I said, now look, a lot of times on Sunday night, we don't even have preaching. I feed them real good on Sunday morning. We burp them on Sunday night. And praise the Lord. But uh, everybody knows how I am about young preachers. And love his family. Appreciate him. Brother, you just come do what you want to do. Amen. Appreciate you. Amen. Amen. Now look, Brother Bryant really brags on this guy. So if don't do good, we're going to get Greg. Praise the Lord. Put old Greg on the spot. But no, I'm just teasing you. But he did say that. Amen. Come, Brother Ethan. Is anybody thankful to be in the house of God on Sunday night? Thank you, Jesus. Why don't you lift your hands right where you are? Oh, I don't think he's, oh, he's done with what he wants to do just yet. I believe God wants to work in this house. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful for the presence of God that we already feel in this house. If you have your Bibles, I won't keep you very long. I want to go directly to Acts chapter 2 and verse 37. Very familiar passion, portion of scripture. While we're turning, I want to say how much I love and appreciate your pastor. He's a wonderful man. That's all right. That's all right. I love him very much. I, I realized today, you know, his, his teaching this morning was just wonderful and anointed. And I realized that not only is he anointed teacher and preacher, your pastor is an anointed cook. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, Hallelujah. Man, I'm so thankful for him. His guidance and advice means the world to me. I, I'm thankful for my pastor, my father, Anthony Morales, my bishop, Mark Copeland, in Mississippi. I believe they're on the live. Thank you very much. So thankful for their guidance and influence in my life. As your pastor was teaching this morning, I won't keep you standing. I know you are. As your pastor was teaching this morning on the Holy Ghost, I begin to think about what the Bible says in Matthew chapter 9. Um, Jesus is speaking. If you have a red letter edition Bible, these words are in red. And he says, you can't take new wine and put it in old bottles, lest the bottles burst and the wine be ruined. But when you have new wine, you've got to put it in new bottles so that both can be preserved. Now, we understand, you know, as a young man, I would read that and I would think, I have no idea what in the world he's talking about. You know, Jesus has a way of confusing young people, it seems like, sometimes reading the Bible. But I'm going to tell you, we understand today that the, the new wine that he's speaking of is representative of the Holy Ghost. And those bottles is the vessel in which the new wine goes. It's us. Is anybody thankful that when you received the Holy Ghost, your old life was passed away? It was gone? Oh, he picked me up and turned me around and placed my feet on sod ground. Does anybody have a testimony in this house of what God did in your life? I'm thankful for the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For that promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off 
even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Very quickly, I want to take to one more passage of Scripture, Romans chapter 10, verse 13. In preparation for this service, God led me this direction. And Brother Effley, he told you earlier, he told me, we may just shout it out. And I'm, I'd been just as happy as we would have, praise God. Romans chapter 10, verse 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear, everybody say, without a preacher? Without a preacher. If you will, put your Bibles down and lift your hands all over this house. I love you, Jesus. I want you to work in this house today. Oh, we need your spirit in this house. We need your touch, Jesus. I trust your word. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for standing. You may be seated. For just a short period of time, I want to preach from this subject, God's plan and God's man. God's plan and God's man. Now, a pastor told me not too long ago, he said, the saving grace of a young minister is preaching doctrine and preaching under 20 minutes. So I'm not going to hold you long tonight, praise God, but I do feel that God wants to work. God is a, is a God of order. He's not a God of disorder. He's not a God of confusion. God is a God of order in his church, in his family, in his leadership. We have order in everything. In our music, we have order. In our choirs, we have order. And that's, that's the will of God. In the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 20, 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man, everybody say, in his image. In his image. In the image of God created he him, male and female. Praise God, we won't get into it. God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful, multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. Everybody say dominion. Over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. The plan of God in the beginning when he created Adam out of the dust of the ground, he created Adam with dominion. I was in a, a men's class not too long ago, and we began to talk about good things that young men should do. And the teacher said, you know, the first thing he did to Adam when he created him was he gave him a job. You ought to have a job if you're a young man. Uh, that, that made me laugh, but it's the truth. God gave Adam dominion. He didn't give him dominion just to sit around and lay around and let the, the garden grow up. He gave him dominion so that he could, he could keep the garden and rule over the garden. It's the will of God today that you have dominion in your life. It's the will of God that you have dominion in your business. It's a, come on, somebody. It's the will of God that you have dominion in your family. If you're here tonight and you don't know, you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and the fear and the anxiety of the future is a hold of you, I'm telling you, God's plan is that you have dominion in your personal life. Woo, in the name of Jesus. It's the will of God that we have dominion in our prayer lives. I'm going to tell you the detriment and the downfall of Christians, and it doesn't matter if you've been in it 10 years or, or 20 years or 100 years, the downfall is when we lose our dominion in our personal prayer. It's the plan of God today that every day that you open your mouth and praise God, you take dominion over your job, over the problems in your life, and that you walk in dominion. That was the plan for God when he created Adam. Thank you, Jesus. We shouldn't have to live under the rule and under the regulation of anxiety and fear. And it riddles the, the generations that we live in. I'm going to tell you, anxiety and fear, addiction, it riddles the, the world that we live in. And it's the will of God that we take dominion in the name of Jesus. The reason today that we struggle with those things is because 6,000 years ago, Adam fell in the garden. And he sinned. And sin came into the world. And now it doesn't matter what problem you're having today. If you, if you trace that problem, if you trace that anxiety, that fear, that gossip, whatever it is in your life, all the way back you'll find the root of it began in the Garden of Eden 
when Adam fell. I'm telling you, sin is rampant in the day we live in, and it started 6,000 years ago, and everything that we do and everything that we struggle against, it, it is rooted in the Garden of Eden. When you wake up in the morning and you struggle to, to get out of bed, you struggle to get a smile on your face, that, that feeling, that depression can be found all the way back in the Garden of Eden. But the will of God today, the plan of God is that you have dominion over that. Oh, you don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay in the, in the same spot, in the same struggle, in the same rut. I'm telling you, God wants you to get up and get out and have victory, have dominion in the name of Jesus. He created you in his image. You're not created in any, any other image, in the image of God. Hallelujah. God wants us to take dominion. Every I, I was reading the news this past week, and many of you are updated on what's going on in Israel and all across the world. The 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 uh, struggle, and man, it's 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 unrest. There's people who can't sleep at night um, for the for the things that are going on in this world. And the root of that, we know it, it goes back to the garden. But God holds our tomorrow. We're not meant to live in fear. We're meant to live in dominion in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 19, For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. That's Adam, the first Adam. His disobedience, many were made sinners. But by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. That's the second Adam. That's Jesus Christ. I'm telling you today, the first Adam sinned and fell in the Garden of Eden. But the second Adam was victorious in the Garden of Gethsemane. Oh, the first Adam died because he allowed sin into the world, but the second Adam died so that we could be free from our sin. Is there anybody that wants freedom from your sin, freedom from your addiction and bondage? I'm telling you, the God of heaven is in this house, and he designed you to have victory over it. The first Adam warred his life away, fighting the sin and, and disobedient actions that he had made. The second Adam warred all of his life, fighting so that our sin and disobedient actions could be made clean. Is anybody thankful that the second Adam, Jesus Christ, came to this earth and died on the cross so that we could be saved? Hallelujah. If you're thankful, would you put your hands together all over the house? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm talking about God's plan. God's plan. The Bible says in John chapter 10, verse 10, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Oh, yeah. Woo. But Jesus said, I am come that they may have life and life more abundantly. Oh, the devil has a plan too. I'm telling you, Satan has a plan. That's why the Bible says no man can serve two masters. Because if you're not living in, the, in dominion and in the plan that God has for you, then you're living in destruction in the plan that Satan has. There's no middle ground today, but God created us to love him. God created us for dominion and victory. Thank you, Jesus. John chapter, chapter 1, verse 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper, be in health, even as thy soul prospereth. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Now, I know... As Christians, a lot of times we get a misconception that, you know, God isn't, we're, we're not here just to live on, on God's money and God's time. And I believe that and I agree. But I also believe that God's will is that we prosper. The Bible says it. Now, I know sometimes we can think of God as somebody who's, who has a, a mallet waiting for us to mess up and waiting for us to make mistakes. But I'm here to tell you, the God of glory and the God of heaven that created all heaven and earth is here and he wants you to prosper. Anybody got a business in the house? God wants your business to prosper. If you got a family in the house, God wants your family to prosper. God wants this church to prosper. If you believe that, would you put your hands together all over the house? Oh, I just believe God has more for this church. I believe God has more for the people in this church. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. If you're struggling with peace in your life, I'm telling you, God has a different plan for you. If you're struggling with fear and anxiety, God has a different plan for you. If you need healing in the house, the God of glory can heal your body. He can heal your relationship. He can heal your addiction. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the plan that God has. I'm talking about God's plan and God's man. 
The only way to God, we understand, is the original plan. You have to go back 6,000, 2,000 years ago, I'm sorry, to the day of Pentecost. Oh, you have to go back further than the Council of Nicaea. You have to go back further than John Wesley and John Calvin to the original. We're apostolic in this place. We're Pentecostal. I'm going to tell you why we're Pentecostal. Because 2,000 years ago, there was a day that God set apart, and it was the original birth of the church. And that's how we live. We're still tongue-talking in the house of God. Oh, we still believe what they believed in Acts 2. We didn't, de we didn't deviate. We didn't go away. We didn't find a new way. I'm telling you, it's still one way to heaven. The Bible Bible says there's only one Lord and one faith and one baptism. There's a one way to heaven. It's through the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, he said, my church is going to prevail. He said, my church is going to prevail. Oh, I praise you, Jesus. The Trinitarian church, it's, it's not going to prevail. If you're Trinitarian in this place, God loves you, and we love you too. The Catholic church will not prevail. My church, the church of the original Pentecostal day, will prevail to the end of time. Oh, hallelujah. If you believe that, put your hands together all over the house. Thank you, Jesus, for the church. Thank you, Jesus, that we can come and be changed and be stirred. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. These are all familiar passages. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly, everybody says suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. They appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And it sat on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Oh, he still does it in 2023. Come on, he still is a Savior in 2023. It's no different way. We still speak in tongues as the Spirit gives the utterance in 2023. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. In, in Acts chapter 2, verse 12, this question is asked. Men gather around as they, they spill out of this upper room, and they're speaking in other tongues, and, and men gather around, and they say, what in the world is going on? What meaneth this? I'm telling you, I'm, I asked that question. <laughs> there was a time when I came into church, and all the men and all the women, I heard them speaking in another language. I said, what meaneth it? What are y'all doing in here? But I'm telling you, God still wants us to speak in tongues. You're not going to find another place in the New Testament that men are saved and women are saved without the utterance of the Holy Ghost. It's not a language we made up. It's not a language we know. It's a language divine from God. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Very similarly, in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, after these events come to pass, they come to Peter, and they say, the Bible says conviction sits on their hearts and in their lives. And they say, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Thank you, God, for conviction. That still brings us to that place. God, what can I do to be closer to you? What can I do to please you? Thank you, Jesus. Now, Peter stands up, and we read this in our opening text, and he gives the way to salvation. It hadn't changed. It's still God's plan. Oh, in 50 years that the Lord tarries, it'll still be God's plan. This truth, it, it marches on. It doesn't matter what happens in Israel. It doesn't matter what happens in America. I'm telling you, the truth that God has placed still marches on through time and space. Thank you, Jesus, for the truth. Peter stood up with the 11 on that day. Now, I want you to understand today that it's not an accident that Jesus, that God Almighty gave us this truth through a man. You know, he could have sent an angel from heaven. He could have came down himself. He was just there and preached the gospel. But I'm going to tell you, he sent a man. Everybody say a man. Amen. Peter comes down and he stands up in agreement with the other 11 and he preaches on this day of Pentecost. I want you to understand today, if God has a plan for your life, then God has a man for your life. 
Oh, come on. We, we, we know we want to be young men. There's people that have callings, and you want to be a preacher. Young ladies, there's talented young ladies. We heard them sing, and we have plans, and God has plans for your life. But before you can walk into the plan of God for your life, you have to find the man of God in your life and say, Brother Appley or whatever your, whoever your pastor is, I submit myself to God's plan through you. I submit myself to God's plan through you. We see this in the Old Testament. The children of the, the Hebrew children are in Egypt. They're in bondage. They're afflicted. And God has a plan for these people. God has a plan bigger than they can imagine. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost in this house. There's people sitting in this house. God has a plan for your life. It's bigger than you can even see right now. Oh, when you picture it in your, in your mind, what God has, it's, it's not, your imagination is not big enough. Oh, your thoughts, they're not wide enough for what God wants. But before you find the plan of God, you find the man of God in your life. Hallelujah. God has a plan for your life. And he had a plan for the, the Israelites. And that plan was orchestrated through a man, Moses. Now, I want you to understand today, Moses was one of the most brilliant leaders in all of the Bible. And he's off one day shepherding in the, in the wilderness, and he's walking, and he sees a bush on fire. He sees a bush on fire. The only problem is, is this bush is not being consumed. It's not falling apart. When something catches on fire, it turns to ashes. It turns to worthlessness. But I'm telling you, when, when Moses saw this bush, it was not being consumed. And Jesus speaks out of this bush, and he says, Go to, his, go to Egypt, and you're going to take my children out of bondage and out of slavery. Now, I want you to understand something. Moses did not escape the rule of God and the way of God. Because when Jesus speaks to Moses, he says, Go to the elders in Israel and tell them that I am that I am has sent you and I'm going to bring you out. Even Moses had to go to men for submission. Even Moses had to find balance in their life, in his own life. I'm going to tell you, he had every right to go solo. Anybody ever seen a bush or a tree burning and not falling down? Me neither. Moses had every right to say, I, I'm, I'm the man, I'm the leader. But he submitted to the voice of God even when God came directly to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for a man. Now, we know I'm not going to take the time. I'm already, I'm, I'm rushing through this. I'm not going to take the time to, to get into it. But we understand the miracles and the signs that happen on this trip. God parts the Red Sea. They go, and, and, and the plan of God is for water to come from a rock and, and to feed and to, and to let his people water because they're thirsty. The plan of God was that manna fell from heaven. Miraculous manna fell from heaven. That was God's plan. But without the man, none of it could have happened. I'm going to tell you, I propose today that if Israel, if the children of Israel, and the children, the Hebrew children would have said, no, I, I, I'm not going to follow you, Moses. I'm not going to, I'm not going to respond. I propose today that the Red Sea may not have ever parted. I propose to you that the manna may never have fallen from heaven. Hallelujah. God still has a plan, and he still has a man. Just like he did in the days of Egypt, just like he did when he brought the nation out, he still has a, has a plan for your life. He still has a, a man for your life. Thank you, Jesus, for the man in my life. God always has a man. He always does. Now, the man of God in your life is not just there to help you in the plan, and receive the plan for your life and the calling. He's there so that you can stay in the plan. We see this with Saul, the first king of Israel, an anointed man of God. He was the king of Israel for a long time, but something happened in Saul's life. There came a time in the life of Saul that he said, I no longer need the voice of the man of God in my life. I no longer need the voice of the prophet in my life. I don't have to heed. I, I've, been, I've been king a long time. When I walk down the street, they bow on the sides of the street. When I, when I come into the room, everybody's attention's on me. I am the man, and I no longer have. I'm going to tell you, submission, it doesn't matter how much money you have. 
It ain't about how much stature you have. It ain't about your family or your family status. Submission comes to everybody, young, old. It doesn't matter who you are and where you are. It's the will of God that you find a man and submit to that man in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. And so Saul does not submit to the man of God. And the day that he, he disobeys, the very day that he disobeys, God begins to look for another king. Oh, God help us today. Help us to find out not just the plan. He does have a plan and he does have a calling for our lives. But help us to find the man and submit. Help us, God, to keep the, the first things first. Saul had it all together. He had the money, he had the reach, he had the fellowship, but without the man of God in your life, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. Thank you, Jesus. God, in his infinite wisdom, said, I'm going to choose the foolishness of preaching. Oh, in the infinite wisdom that God has, he says, I'm going to choose a man. It doesn't take any humility to submit to an angel. It doesn't take any humility to submit to, to God himself coming down from heaven. Brother Epley, pastor, said it this morning. He said, if, if you say God spoke to me, then I, you pulled rank on me. It doesn't take any submission. I'm going to tell you what takes submission is finding a man and saying, I want the will of God in my life. I want the plan of God in my life. More than anything, I want to be effective. Oh, it's not just enough to be anointed. It's, it's not enough just to have the anointing of, of God on your life. You've got to be appointed. You've got to find a man that says, I, I know you can preach, I know you can sing, I know you have the talent, but now's not the time, or, or now is the time. That's appointment. See, God anoints us from birth. The Bible says anointing is without repentance. God, God gives us an anointing from the day we're born, but appointment comes through a man. Oh, if, you, if the plan of God is going to come to fruition in your life, it's going to come through a man. The Bible says that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, suffering, goodness. Thank God that we serve a God that wants us to have love, wants us to have peace, wants us to have joy. If you don't have joy in your life tonight, I believe it's the will of God that you leave here with joy. Oh, if you don't have peace in your family, in your situation, it's the will of God that you leave with peace in your life. And the way we do that is we find the plan of God and we find the man of God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. God wants people that will humble themselves before man and before God's plan. You know, the plan of God is to, is to renew everything. God wants to redeem everything. John, the revelator, he looks up into heaven, and God shows him a vision, and he sees a new heaven. He sees a new earth. It's the will of God that everything be redeemed in your life, in your family, in your business, and all around you. It's the will of God that everything be redeemed. Until that day when the trumpet sounds and we see that new heaven and that new earth, I'm going to tell you there's only one way for us to be redeemed. That's through the blood of Jesus Christ that he shed on Calvary. There's only one way to God, and that's through the cross. That's through the man, Christ Jesus. I'm already done. If you would, stand all over the house. Music play, if you will, play softly, please. The only path to Jesus, the only avenue to salvation is through the blood of Jesus. You know, Nazareth wanted a man. They, they, wanted, a, they, they, they wanted the Messiah. But when Jesus came to a manger, they couldn't stomach the man that Jesus was. The Pharisees, they wanted the plan of God. Oh, they, they, they were looking for the plan of God. But they couldn't stomach the man, Christ Jesus. God never gives a plan without a man. Will you lift your hands all over the house? Oh, I feel him in this house. In the name of Jesus, all over this house, come on, would you praise God? Would you thank him today? I have more I could say, but I feel, I feel the convicting power of the Holy Ghost in this house. Hallelujah. I could tell you about Paul today and how when God struck him off the, the animal that he was riding, Jesus speaks from heaven and he tells him, Go to Ananias in the city. 
God, why can't you just talk to me while I'm here? I'm speaking right to you. No, 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 no. God always has a man. I, I could tell you today about Cornelius who gave alms. He prayed without ceasing. And an angel from heaven comes to Cornelius and says, I've got a man for you, Peter. Well, God, you sent an angel. The angel could just tell me what I need to do. No, that, that wasn't the plan. Go to a man named Peter. And we know, obviously, you know, you, you've heard of Peter. What a man. You know, I've, I've made mistakes. I'm sure many of you have too. If not all of you, praise God. You know, but the good thing is, is when I make a mistake, I can, I can pray about it. I can get through it. And in a little while, I can normally get over it and everybody forget about it. Not Peter. He didn't only deny God one time. He denied him three. And then it was written down in the Bible forever. It's going to be in there for generation after generation to read. Here's where Peter messed up. I wonder today if Cornelius said, Lord, couldn't you give me somebody else? The only man who has this account that's going to, everybody's going to know my pastor did this. But the plan of God, it's not about the man. It's about your response to the man. Oh, we're all human. That's, that's the plan of God. He wants to take the foolishness of preaching. God could have said, I don't want to mess this message up, so I'll come down myself and preach it. But he takes Peter and he says, I want you, I, I trust you as a man because that's the operation of God. And that's how, that's his will for our lives. God has a plan for everybody in this house. In the name of Jesus, would you come around this front all together, lift your hands. I'm going to tell you what I feel in these closing moments right before they begin to sing all over this house I believe that there is a plan of God for revival in this area I believe it's the will of God that we, we pack this building out it looks good here tonight but I wonder what it would look like if all these altars all around this area were so packed we couldn't even get all the way up here I wonder what would happen tonight if people grabbed a hold of the plan of God and the man of God and said I'll be used I'll be used I'll be used it doesn't matter where I'm at it doesn't matter my position in the church I know you have a plan for me and I'll find your man and I'll submit myself to your man so that you can use me there's a plan in young in these young men's lives I believe the call of God is on your life but before you can realize that plan and that purpose you have to find a man Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All over this house, lift your voice to Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Ooh, I need you, Jesus. Oh, God, I'll be used by you. I'll be used by you. I'll be used in your will and your way in the name of Jesus. Help me, God, to know you.
raise our hands and thank God for his plan. My, my, just the other day I was teaching on as for God, his way is perfect. Amen. As for God, his way is perfect. Amen. God's plan, God's plan is to use man. That's his plan. That's because man's fallible. Amen. That's not, not because he's infallible. Because he's fallible. If you had an infallible man, he wouldn't have any patience with you, with your fallibility. I've known some that thought this infallible. Amen. But but if you drop an egg, it'll break, I promise you. Amen. But God uses fallible men because we're fallible. That's God's plan. I'm glad it's that way. Amen. He could the thunder from the voice, you know. Amen. God spoke from the mountain. You know what the people said? i tell you what, Moses, you let God speak to you, and then you talk to us. <laughs> we don't want to hear that anymore. Amen. That's enough. Thank you, Brother Ethan, preaching to us tonight. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Again, glad to have our visitors with us tonight. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. See you Wednesday night. Bring your hard hat and your hard toed shoes. I'm going to work you over.